Um, so a brief introduction. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, who of you are developers? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. How many of you, oh, six, how many of you are uh, designers? Okay, and just uh, integrators? Okay, all of you. So I'll... Um, uh, the problem of, the, of this session is that I can go in any of those uh, sectors and explain a different kind of things. So I'll just start with the uh, integrator stuff. So uh, how you can build a website uh, using Zoo without even touching anything, even HTML. Uh, then I'll go into more HTML and CSS stuff and the end since there are only five six developers I'll do some kind of code example to show you the real potential behind uh, what Zoo can can do uh, so on me uh, I'm not from you theme okay I don't work with you theme uh, I'm a collaborator I have my own company in Italy which is Webble this one uh, which is uh, an Italian company that builds websites and web applications and mobile applications. Then we have also a company uh, named Zoolenders, which runs the zoolenders.com website, uh, which if you don't know, it's a website where we sell uh, and support uh, zoo extensions. So we improve what zoo can do uh, in the core with extra extensions. Uh, by the way, the team is not mine, as you can probably see. Uh, it's from Kyle at Better for his presentation. He shared, so I just use it. Okay, so let's start. Uh, just a, an overview of how Zoo uh, handles all the content you input. So all we are all on the same page. Uh, Zoo has this kind of concepts inside. If you, uh, how many of you never used Zoo? Never used. Okay. Brief introduction. Um, on Zoo, you have applications. Uh, each uh, content you input is inside a, a, like a folder, which which is called applications. Uh, it's like having. Uh, I'll explain that later on. But it's like having a, a component inside a component. Uh, you have a business directory, which is a, a subset of Zoo, in which you can list all your business directories, and it's. And that acts as a separate component as, as by itself. Then you have types, which is uh, uh, how you define content. I'll see, explain that later too. Uh, you basically define a set of custom fields. You have an item, and you say this item has a name, as a, um, a category. Then you can say it as a, a label, which says, uh, for example, for for the business uh, listing, uh, how square meters, how many square meters, how, uh, on which floor the the the, uh, um, the flat is, and so on, and you define that in types. You do that using elements, which are the building blocks uh, of a type, and you create items using these types and elements. Uh, you display uh, items uh, with using layouts. Each item can have multiple layouts of your choice. You can create how many you want, and you can display an item in uh, infinite different ways. And also, Zoo has a thing called submission, which is the, uh, something like a front-end edit. You, ca you can also insert content from the front-end. You can edit content from the front-end. You can choose who can do that using ACL. And you can also choose which information of a particular type you can input from the front end. So you can also say if an item has like 20 properties from the front end, you can only just input the first three because the other are more technical and will be dealt with in the administration. Okay. Okay. So giving more into the structure, this is the brief description. I, I usually give. Of what an application is, uh, you build like a, a fixed set on your website, and you work inside that. So when you build a section like um, of your website or a catalog, um, you work inside an instance of an application. 
What's an instance? An instance is uh, a single copy of an, of an application. You can have a business listing and you can run like five different business listing application on the same site, like they were totally independent. But the code you use is the same, so you can keep reusing it on the same site. Okay. The application concept lets you, uh, 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 as an hier hierarchy, so you can have the, the core application you have in the free zoo package, which are two, the blog application and the page application. The page is just as Joomla content is. Uh, you can build single pages, static content. And then there is the blog, which is a blogging system with teaser views, images, and whatever. And in the pro package, which is commercial, uh, you have a movie database application, business listing application, download application, and I don't remember all of them, they are, I think, eight, uh, which all uses Zoo, but show the content and lets you e input the content in, a, in very different ways, and they look like different extensions. Uh, with an application that you can also create very easily, you don't need to be a developer to create an application. You just need to be uh, aware of folder structures, and that's it. Uh, you can also override our, our application uh, um, displays or deals with data completely. So if you don't like our, our, or, or if you, uh, or if, or if you your application has a custom workflow, you can integrate that easily into Zoom. Types, very, very easily for developers, the type is like a class. Uh, you have a set of properties you can just input, and they can be like a select, they can be a, a text field, a text area, a radio button, or an image field, uh, whatever. They can customly be built very easily by a developer. And, and they can really do nearly whatever you think. And layouts, this is for, the, I think, the most of the audience. Uh, you can really do what, whatever you want with an item from the uh, displaying point of view. You can really uh, imagine a layout and you don't have limits on how can you, you can display that. It's very, very easy to um, display the content you want. Okay. I already said this, so well, I'll skip it. Okay, uh, Zoo has already a lot of elements, and by a lot, I mean a lot, like 50. Uh, you have, uh, from the simple text line in the administration can, in which you can input simple text, to the text area, like in Joomla, you have radio buttons, you have select, you have uh, image, you can upload an image, resize an image, you can do really whatever you want. You have social buttons, you can just drop in uh, the Facebook share, you know, and all the items of that type will have the social share, and the Google Plus, uh, the discuss comments, uh, the email field, the video field, whatever. And the, 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 the beauty of it is all uh, very easy to use. It's all drag and drop, push a button, uh, adjust the drag and drop for the categories to go and order and so on. I like always to present a real work case to show you what uh, you can do with, uh, with Zoo on a real client website. So this is zonit.co.uk. It's a UK website for an Italian company. I don't know if you, if you know the brand. It's a wine company, quite popular. Um, it's totally, it was built by Webble in Italy, and it's totally built on Warp, Zoo, Widget Kit, and some of our tools at, at zoolanders.com. And we don't have anything else, just those. So, um, and the contact form, sorry, there is com contact. Uh, how the site is structured, uh, it's a catalog of wines, basically. You can see all the wines that the company produces. Each wine has a winery, which is at the east estate where the wine is produced, with the place, the region, uh, f uh, sort of soil, and whatever. And there is the person which deals with the making of the wine, which is the winemaker. 
and these are related between each other. Uh, each winery has multiple wines, but uh, a wine has uh, only a single winery, so it's one to multi relationship. And a winery um, has only one winemaker. Okay? So, how we built the site, this is a, the, the home page of the website. Uh, we accept comments if you want later on. Um, these two uh, things are modules that you have uh, shipped within Zoo. It's called Mod Zoo Item. It shows a list of items that can be automatically fetched from a Zoo application with a set of different filters. Um, they, uh, each one has a dedicated layout, so we built a single HTML layout for each one of them uh, to display them right as you see them. So this is one layout for the wine, for example, is this one layout, and this is one layout for the awards, which are the prizes that the company has won uh, along the years. The image there is not inputted in the backend at that dimension, can be at uh, whichever dimension you, you see fit. I think they are like 500 pixels, something, something like that. Zoo deals with all their sizing. You just have to, like, say in this page, I want this image at 100 pixels. Their sizing is done on the fly the first time the user sees the images, and they are cached. So you don't have to worry about, you know, image resizing on, with Photoshop and so on. And they automatically are fetched based like a, on a category, on a special field. They are ordered as you want, like by the newest, the most clicked, uh, alphabetically, randomly, whatever you want. And those two modules load uh, items from two different applications on the same page. So one is a news application, uh, I'm sorry, an awards application, which is a custom application. And the other is a, a, a catalog application, a product catalog application. And this module here is another uh, module, um, which is a widget kit module. I don't know if you ever used widget kit. How many of you, of you doesn't, do not know what widget kit is? Oh, great. Thank you. OK, basically, that's a, a slide set. OK. No, it's like show, I think, um, which pulls automatically from Zoo items uh, the content. So that one here, that one there, is a Zoo item, okay? And there, the, there are the, it has a custom layout to display the title, the description, and the image, and all the uh, JavaScript effects like the slides and so on. It's automatically done. Uh, time to build that is like one minute. Uh, let's see if I forgot something, but I think not. Perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, the two images you see here, the big one and the small one, are actually the same image, just uh, placed into two different positions with different dimensions. So you just upload once, and it can be used into multiple multiples places with different dimensions and even different proportions because you can crop or, or uh, fill images with white or whatever background you want. Okay, this is one is a um, commercial extension we have. It's called Zoo Filter. And it allows you to filter on any Zoo item on any field. So you can uh, just drop into this module with drag and drop one of the fields you have in your item and you can say okay uh, search on this field and you can say search partially search exactly search with ranges um, search with uh, the and keyword like and 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 or the or so any of the matches works and you can configure it like from one place with Ajax it's very very smooth I show you uh, later on and what it does is filter your zoo items on an application. So the result of a search is just like a category page, uh, just filtered by the, the, the selects you have done. And by the way, those were selects, you can also use input 
uh, radio buttons, check boxes, check boxes, whatever you want. Um, this is a what we call a teaser view. Uh, you have that in com content too. Uh, this image here is really inputted as like 800 pixels, and it's resized on the fly. Um, there is the title of the item, the image, and then you'll see, let me go, okay, the little image above could be an image uh, element inside the wine that you just, for each wine, you upload this image. But if you look well, you will see that some of them are the same, like this one and this one and so on. And we, it, that one is not an image element in Zoo. It's one of the, the greatest features in Zoo. It's called Related Item. And I'll show you, yes, show you what, how you, you can use that to build really powerful applications uh, with like a couple of clicks. I'll show you this in the next slide. Okay. So when you click on an item here, you go to the full view, like in every CCK or content system. This is the full view of the wine. We built the type, as we spoke before, wine, which has a list of uh, fields. Origin, grapes, type of soil, training system, planting system, and so on. Uh, each one has a different type, because, for example, origin uh, is a select field. Um, grapes is a multiple select field. You see 60% Sangioveto, 35% Custom Savignon. Uh, you can multiple select those on a, on a list. Text area, uh, normal text field, and so on. The, Im oh, sorry. the image on the left is the same image you add on the list, just resized to this dimension. Again, one upload for uh, having multiple images on different sides on different pages. You have a list of fields as I s said before. Yeah. Okay, and each one of them is searchable both from the Joomla system, so with a normal search, search box, and with the filter for detailed uh, search on each field. The last thing is this one. This is a related item. You remember the winery before? Wine and winery. It, this information is, is not inputted on the wine page. You just select the related winery. You input it on another page. You create a winery, a wine, and then you link them with a simple Ajax um, selection, which you see all the items. And you can say, in the wine page, show me whatever information I want of the other type. So when you link, you can also show all the information you need from another type. This is what you usually need, where you usually need a custom built component, you know, when you have to do a, a particular listing. You need a developer to go there and say, okay, these are the, this is the data. I link them this way, and then in this page I know I have also to fetch another set of data. With Zoo, you can do that with like one click, and you really can show whatever you want in any page. For example, that one is the name of the, com of the winery, is address, phone number, and so on. The one on the top right, as you will see, the name is the same, Castello d'Albola is the same. I simply show the same item on a different place with different elements on the layout. And if you click uh, on the image or on the title, you go to the winery page, which has its own layout. As you will see, I hope, if the system doesn't, okay, uh, which is this page. You will see the image up there. If you remember for a couple, from a couple of slides before, it was uh, the logo I put in the teaser item uh, of the category of the search, whatever. This is widget kit, is automatically integrated. You can, uh, with the image element, you can upload as many images you want. You can pick them one by one or by folder, and you can display them in a widget kit directly from the zoo item edit page. 
So you just have to input the images, and the system will render them as a slideshow or a, or a slide set or a gallery or whatever you want. And the same goes for this page, this part here. Sorry, this is what I said before. This one. Those are the items, the related items of the winery. So we have the wines, and we have linked them to the winery. Okay. Now we can display them as a widget kit. So as a slideshow, I can show in a slideshow a list of like 20 wines that the winery has. Just by click selecting from the winery page or from the wine page, which wines uh, this winery produces. And Zoo automatically will display them in a slideshow with whichever information I need. So if I wanted here to display also uh, the alcohol level of the wine, I will just have to drop in in the layout the alcohol level element and automatically Zoo will display in every slideshow of every wine that information and style it too, obviously. And the one below here, you, you, you see it cut, but it's the winemaker I spoke before. So in this page, we have two different related items between two different types, okay? And this could go on and on and on, because you could also have like seven different types and link them together, together as you need. And you can also relay, uh, show the related item of the related item of the related item and so on. So you can just go through all the, of the chain and display the last one from the first one, as you want. Okay, this was some kind of real example. And now, first, a couple of questions. So, if you have questions on this part of the uh, talk, please feel free. Okay, Boyan first, get to was. This is based on a product catalog application, which is a commercial. Uh, it's in the commercial package. Obviously, it's customized. Uh, not from the code point of view. So there is no PHP code there. Just custom types, so built from the Zoo administration interface, which I will show you. And some custom layouts just for the CSSs and so on. But the HTML, for example, is the same of the product application. And the resizing of images, the resizing in the PNG, or uh, uh, the resizing of image uh, is done in whichever format is supported by your JD library installed on the system. So if you have a JPG up, uh, image, you upload a JPG, it will remain JPG. If you upload a PNG, it will remain a PNG and so on. You cannot convert on the fly, if, but you can resize and crop and stretch and whatever on the fly. Per layout, I will show you that after. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, all I'm sorry, there are the all the. Yeah, too many effects, sorry. Okay. So, uh, let's say uh, Origin. Yep. Can I click on or the scanner, IGT, and see all the lines? With okay. Origin, you could do that, but you need Zoo Filter, which is an, our commercial application. Because Zoo Filter simply builds a unique URL for the search. Okay, so when you have searched the first time and do the same search again, the URL you have is the same and as a an unique ID. It just is like search and search ID equal one. For example, when you have that URL, you can use it wherever you want, and you know that that's the link to a search. And that's very useful because, for example, you want to send a link to someone uh, with a list of your wines just from uh, Tuscany. Okay? Uh, you just search Tuscany, go to the page, and you have a permalink to the, to the search page in the listing. Yeah? Uh, you can do that in very different ways. The first way could be a simple text box and the user inputs. 
The second one could be uh, um, multi a repeatable text box. Uh, repeatable, I will show repeatable after, but basically if you, if you have a text element, you can say user can add as many instances of the text element as he wants, and then you can display them separated by comma. And that works too. If you have related items pro, which is another extension we have on Zulanders, you can relate items, which would be Sangiovese, and you can add extra information on that relation. So you can link wine to Sangiovese, for example, and uh, say 65% is the information on the relation, and display them as 65% and the name of the item. It's a bit complicated because uh, it's a very advanced feature. Nearly no one uses it. But if you need it, it's very, very advanced. There was another question, I think. No. OK. Uh, so I'll close. I hope to be able to write with, with this thing on. Uh, let me open the browser with the administration area. Just to show you, those who already use Zoo, please be patient for a couple of minutes. I'll show you the basic Zoo administration interface, just for those who has not yet used Zoo. It should take one minute. OK, yeah, Zoo has these applications. Uh, when you buy the um, commercial package. So the blog and the page is the free one and all the others are commercial. They are not so different from the code point of view. They are practically identical. All that changes is the pre-built types and the graphics. Okay. So even if you have the basic free <coughs> Zoo version, you can copy the blog application over and build your own like in one minute, and you can do the product application exactly the same just by adding the CSSs. Okay, so when, I'm sorry. When you enter the zoo, these here are instances of the application as we saw before, and when you go to the type manager, <laughs> like of the product application, which is the most similar to the wine we spoke about. You have different types here. So I can insert automobiles, I can insert books, I can insert cameras, I can insert cell phones, and each one of them has different uh, informations on the type. So this one has a, uh, the default has name, okay? So each, type, each, each item has a name by default. And other than the name, you have the teaser description, the description, the image, and so on. And then you can say, when I display a book, for example, I can display it in this many ways. Okay? And this list is just populated from the layouts you have on the, on the media folder. So if you drop one more, you have another layout, and another layout, and another layout, and you can go on, on, and on, and add as many views as you like. For example, the two common are teaser, which is the, the small one, and pool, which is the, the big one. In the teaser, you can drop the name and the image, and in the image, you can say, uh, the, I want to resize it to 150 50 pixels, and the eight is automatically calculated on the width. Uh, or you can also crop it, you input in the, uh, the exact eight. Or you can display a lot of other things, just dragging and drag and dropping inside a layout. Okay? This is for a quick overview. Um, with our elements, you can do something more because, for example, in Image Pro, you can not only uh, input the, the size, but you can also choose how the cropping will be uh, handled, like on the width, on the eight, uh, always crop, crop only when, and so on. Uh, you can display the image as a widget kit, you can display the image as a gallery, you can display the image as a list, and so on. But what I want to show you is how easy it is to just build your own application without being a programmer, just copying files over and renaming things. 
uh, and he, let me show what uh, uh, 15 minutes. We should be able to do quite a bit in 15 minutes. Okay, I have already something ready for you, so we don't go and lose time typing. But basically, this is the website, normal Joomla website, and all zoo-related things are in media zoo. This is where the fun starts. Uh, really, you should just look into the application folder, which is where you have all the application files. And these here, as you see, are um, the exact same application we have in the, in the zoo backend. So what I'm going to do is just drop in a demo application I, I wrote, which is a, just the blog application with a different name, okay? Which is this, I hope, okay? I just copy this entire thing. Let me remind me, I think it was demo. Uh, zoo here, applications. So I just create a new folder. Uh, sorry, with the one hand is a bit difficult. Demo. And drop all the files of the application, which as you will see is the copy of this one. It's exactly the same. I just changed the, the application inform uh, icon to use the JMBN logo because the blog application is copyrighted. The, the, um, the icon is copyrighted. Uh, you just have to do two changes, which is as in templates or extensions usually, you have to change the XML file, XML file with the details like the name, the name of the folder, who is the author and so on the description, whatever you want. It's very similar to a team template.xml details. And the other, thi the other thing you want to do is change the prefix of the class, okay? So it, it is the same name you have for the application. It works even if you don't, but if you want to customize the code from a developer point of view, you need this change, otherwise it, otherwise it will not work. So if I call my folder demo, as we did, this is demo application, and in the XML file you have demo demo. This is just a name, and this is the name of the folder in which you put the application, okay? Uh, by the way, this it will be online after the jab, so if you want to give it a try, uh, looking at the presentation, we will be able to. And then it's just a matter of, uh, I've dropped it in, and magically you will see that if I go to the configuration panel of Zoo, a new application is here. You could, you could also package it as a zip file and install it through the, um, the installer here in Zoom. Not the Joomla installer, just this installer. And it will do the exact same thing, just unzip it on the media Zoo folder. That's why I did it manually. When you go inside, you have, I, will, I didn't create any default type. So you can build your own, but you could also create the, the, the types from here, copy the application over, and if you give it to someone else, they will have the types you declared with the exact same configuration. So it's very easy to move application from one side to the other, or even to build a preset uh, application and to distribute it. It's very, very easy. So what I'm going to do here is just create a basic type with some custom uh, element like suggestions. No, whatever, a beer. That's because we are at JM Beyond. Um, uh, those extra information you saw you sh you saw here, just drop them are in our custom fields for Zoolander's elements. Uh, we, if you want, after the, the talk, I can explain what they are. And then I drop in just a couple of elements to show you uh, the potential, like I don't know the text, which could be uh, let's say alcohol level. Yeah, I can really type. I'll, I'll Call. 
Okay, if you if you put repeatable here, the user will be able to input multiple values, one below the other, <coughs> as many times as you want. Just to show you the difference, we have an extension called no, not yet. We have a text pro in the lenders which does this plus like character limitation. Uh, 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 do you call truncate of, on words, on letters, uh, and so on? Widget kit integration to show multiple text on a slideshow and so on. And then we can have an image, which I will be using our Image Pro, in which you can say this is the image. You can say I want the user to be able to upload multiple images, jo not just one, but more than one. I want to be able to choose files, just folders, or both, see both files and folders. So when you select folders, it will just fetch all the images inside a folder automatically, instead of having to select one by one. You can give a default file. Uh, if no one inputs the file, that's very common for thumbnails. And you can give a legal extension to upload, um, and many other things. OK, that's the base. And we could also put like a text area for a description. Description. When you've done, yeah, I typed it wrongly. Let's leave it like that. Okay, this is my beer catalog. I create this app instance for my database, which is demo called beers. And a new tab will appear on here. And now, if you want to give it to your users uh, for inputting new items, the, the input is very straightforward because they just have the fields like in any CCK uh, in which they, ha they can uh, just say uh, Power Learner uh, published. You can even disable search for this element if you don't want to be find, find it in, uh, in the Joomla search. You can enable or disable comments on a single item, categories and whatever. Description, you can use whatever editor you want. Just type this, whatever. The Image Pro has a nice Ajax functionality. Uh, this is the image folder, so you just can click and it will show you, give me, oh yeah, or stories, uh, yeah, sorry, I was picking um, just from folders, so I cannot click on a file, you know, it doesn't work. But if, if I do the demo and blog, it will say to me, yeah, this is the blog folder, you have 12 files in them I can use, and you can display them like in a list or in a widget kit or whatever you want. If I go back, and say to the image element, please let me show files and close. I get back to beer, click on new. I now can select an image and it will show me a quick preview, a thumbnail with the dimensions uh, and the title. You can specify a title for the image, like the title attribute. The light box, you can also specify an image that opens when you click on the image itself, which could be the same image or another image. And the spotlight feature, uh, uh, you know of the spotlight feature in your team templates. When you pass over and it does gray, um, it does the opacity thing to show different images. You can also do that, like the default, which is that, or um, a caption that came in, comes in, with the in with the, from the top, from the bottom, from the left, from the right. You can also use the repeatable feature to click like add an error and go on adding images, like you can, you can do here with text. I can input 12 and then click add an error here if I click correctly and simply go on and on and on and I can drag and drop them so they will be displayed in this order on, and not the other one. Let's call Paul Anner just for sake. 
and then I go into templates just to show it to the designers what you can do. Okay, now I choose to display on the teaser view uh, the name. Okay, and you can customize various options on display. You can link it and you can save. And then on a full view, which is the one that when you go to the single item, you will be able to see like the name. No, I'm sorry, let's put it here. Alcohol into meta and image on media. And here there are a lot of options. I will not go into them because there are so many. You can resize as in the base image. You can choose the cropping method. You can choose if, if you're using widget kit, just to show you what you can do. You can use a gallery with the showcase style, the slice set style, and you can also say each option you have on widget kit, you have them here too. So I just skip this because it's too much. We have only five minutes. And save. Now if I link directly to the item just to show you quickly what you can do. Okay, I'll link just the single item just to make it quick. And we call it beer. Yeah, beer, new type of beer. I can select the single beer application, then say, okay, give me the power runner, save. I go viewing my site, there is the beer. No, cool, ah, uh, my fault, sorry, sorry, my fault, too, too hard, it's classic thing of the hiring. When I created the beer application, I didn't set any template, which is the default, I, it's, it's this. So if I refresh, okay. This is the basic item. You, you, you see here um, comments. You can disable the comments from the configuration of the application. Now if I go for templating for the designers, you have a templates folder inside them. Each application has its own templates. So you can add as many as you want. So for different instances, you can use different templates. For a single template, you, uh, you can customize whatever you want, because all the layouts are here. So if you want to edit uh, a single item page, a category page, uh, a list of items, the pagination, whatever you want, and then you can also customize uh, each single layout for each type is displayed. So for example, we are in the full layout here because it's a single uh, item. And then if you, if you drop here your layout, uh, yeah, it's nearly as looks like a normal template. As you see, this is HTML5. If you want, there are normal templates like HTML4. XHTML1.0, and basically what you do is just uh, have an HTML uh, code, whatever you want, and you just say, okay, render here the media position, okay, which is. Let me go back. This position. So when you drop something into the media position in this interface, from the code point of view where you output the template, it's just like with the modules in Joomla. You just say, okay, load the media position here. With just this simple code, you just drop in uh, the media. And you can also say how to link different elements inside the same position. For example, you say drop two, mo two modules here, like alcohol. How should the system merge the two? Like with divs, with the, uh, an order list, order list, comma, pipe, whatever you want. There are like 10 different ways, I think. And with uh, our extension, you can also say each position can be displayed as a widget kit. So you, you use widget kit as a separator, and it just does a slideshow of everything. 
You can go far beyond this uh, because if you open the position.xml file, which simply lists all the position you have in a single layout, you can say in the full layout here, there are these positions. Okay? You need another one, like you need another model position and a template for Joomla. Just drop a new position here, it will appear on the back end as a separate box. So you can keep dropping in new position as many as you want, whatever you want. Since it, the time is over, I'll just shot another feature that can be interesting. You can also do type dedicated layout. So if you have, like here, a beer and then you have the brewery store, you can say the beer has five layouts like full, teaser, feed, and ABC, but the brewery do, does not have these layouts because they are totally different. I need four layouts which, are, which they have to look like totally different, and you can say, okay, create a folder named brewery and put there all the layouts for the brewery, and you are, you are okay, okay. You, you, are, you have dedicated layout for each type. So you can really do as much design as you want. There, will, there is so much more you can do with them. Uh, yeah, but we would like to uh, leave time for questions, you know, because that's what, what they do. And if time, I, I have more time, I can go on with uh, example like custom elements, custom controllers, uh, custom MVCs, uh, you can export in JSON, you can export in CSV, uh, you can really do whatever you want. You can, when an item is saved in Zoo, you can do like whatever you want. Um, so if you have questions, please do. Boyan? Custom elements, okay. There are several ways, uh, uh, you know elements, you have the core ones, which are here. In the famous media zoo folder, you have the elements. And here you can say all the elements you have in zoo, okay, media and whatever. You can, one, drop a new folder here and it will be automatically added as a new element. You can, two, uh, drop the, the element inside your application because maybe that element is just used for one application. And let me see, there is the elements folder here. Just drop a new element here and it works. And the fun things, this is overridable. So if you like the media element of Zoo, but just need a small difference, like the layout is a bit different, you just drop here the layout for the, me for the media element. You, you create media folder and its layout. And just the layout will be overridden for that application. And free. You can build a plugin, uh, a system plugin. You can install that in Joomla. And from the plugin, there is a code that lets you tell Zoo when you search for elements, search also in this other folder, which could be, for example, a subfolder of the plugin. That's how we distribute our elements. We install a system plugin with a subfolder called elements. And then we tell Zoo whenever you load, Please look also into this folder for extra elements, so we don't have to manually uh, let the people copy paste things inside the, the zoo folder. There was. I'm sorry. In yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, some, uh, the question is how submissions work, uh, basically. I just expand a bit the question. This can also uh, not only the user, the creator, also approve. Yep, that's possible. That's called item edit feature. Uh, it's new since 2.5.17, I think, which is the latest one. Um, you have the normal submission through which you can just edit your own items. So if the user ID that created the item is your own, you can, otherwise you cannot. Uh, in the new version, you have also the possibility to create a submission, which is called item edit submission. 
you just have to select, say, this is the submission I created, mark it as an item at the submission, and then for that submission you can say all the people in this Joomla group, user group, can access, and so when you do that, there is an element you can drop into a, uh, a type, which is called edit, and it just prints an edit link on the full page if you are a user inside that group. You click, it leads you to that submission for any element you can edit. So it's front-end edit, basically, for, for the Zoom. Okay? Uh, as a continuation of this question, what's involved? What kind of code do you need to actually make the element itself? Okay, I have a demo element on the fly. I'll show you that. Uh, it's here. Uh, basically, you don't need a code. You just name the name of the class, and you are good to go. Usually when you build an element, the, it is a basic element, you need the XML file, which is exactly the same as a template file with the name and whatever, which files and parameters. But the PHP files, which usually is what you will be working on, is basically just the class name. So element and the name you want to give it, so demo in this case. And usually what you need is this method and this method, which tells the element how the edit form looks like when you go into the item edit, and how the, when, when you render the element, how it should output the value you input it on, on the backend. And this is basically just it. You can, you can return basically HTML here. So you can, this is just a way to, like JH, HTML, and so on, you can just return input to whatever. Or you can also load layouts here. And I have a demo of that. If you want, I can show you that later. When you do edit here, you can, uh, sorry, call the layout, which is on a separate HTML file. So you call a render layout, and you can load this type of file. So for a designer, it is much easier because you say, okay, build me the rendering of this particular element which does, I don't know, skyrocketing. You give them the HTML file, they build it, and then you just drop it in, call like four lines of code called render layout, and it will just look into the folder, fetch the layout, and output it. Okay, then you can do much more advanced things. For example, you can have this get search that data, which tells the system which of your values inside the element are available for searching. Uh, you can make it repeatable, you can make it submittable, you can make it uh, uploadable, because if you inherit the file element, you can upload automatically, you don't have to write the code for uploading. It's already done, just have to mark it with an interface. Um, you can have calls in your URL. So if you build an element and you want to have a, like a nudges call, so you need an, an URL to point that to, to fetch data from the element, you, you can define a method here and just mark it as callable. And it will work. There is a an endpoint for that. Any more questions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I can. OK. No, no go, go, boy. Yeah. What's that? Uh, no, uh, does it work for Zoom? Yeah, we take it that into consideration. We, we just to repeat the question, uh, if you mark an item as not searchable, both Joomla and Zoo filter will not search for that item. Okay, it will be just as the item doesn't exist on the front end. I'm sorry, your question? Uh, we don't currently have virtual integration, we have Tienda integration. So what you can do uh, is save, uh, Lucas there is from the Tienda team, so <laughs> you can build an item and say save this item as a Tienda product and sell that using just Zoom. You, we will never open Tienda, you will open Tienda just for the order part, you know, manage the order ship it and whatever, but for creating products, you just build as we did a custom product and place a price and the price will be sent to Tienda, Create the Tienda product will be created and will be linked 
And on your Zoop page, you can drop in the, the cart button, you know, add to cart, quantity, whatever, the, with also the attributes. So you can choose like the shirt size, the color, whatever. And you only use Zoop for browsing the catalog. And the checkout will be in Tienda, with a one-page checkout new feature they have. The only downside for now is that Tienda is not yet, as Luca will say later on, 2.5 compatible. But they are really hard working on that. So I think in like, what's that, July? July, hopefully July. July uh, probably will be 2.5 compatible. And so you will have a 2.5 card system for, for Zoo as well. It's the only Zoo card solution I know of. So yeah. Other questions? No? We have still some, like, two minutes. Yeah, I'm right. Perfect. So we got it finished. If you have any questions, please come to me because I would like, really would like to show you what else you can do with Zoo because this is just the tip of the iceberg. And please, if you like our extension, you can find a coupon code here on the table. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you.